help me. Please, help me. I've been kidnapped. <laughs> Defense attorney Merle Hammond's escape from this remote vacation hideaway ended the bizarre saga of his mysterious disappearance from the Pleasant Hollow Country Club four days ago. Police converged on the site immediately in hopes of subduing the kidnapper, but so far that person remains at large. And of course, it is the identity of that alleged kidnapper that is the most baffling aspect of this ordeal. An ordeal that, according to authorities, seems to have had its roots in a crime that took place about a year ago. Finally bought it. And you, dear brother, are my first passenger. So what do you think? Isn't it gorgeous? I'm very impressed. <laughs> Uh-oh, what's this? No CD player? Come on, Gwen. Well, you see what I have instead. You know how I always kept that little pad up here for jotting down notes and stuff? Oh, yes. Well, I don't have to bother with that anymore now that I have this. So what do you think, George? Now that I have this. So what do you think, George? I think it's a wonderful gadget, and I hope the two of you will be very happy together. What's wrong? We have to sell. Oh. I can't figure out why Damon's being so stubborn about it. He's the one with the family, mortgage, great American dream debt. You know you'll work it out, you always do. Thanks, you're the best. And this, fabulous. <laughs> Did you get that? I said it was fabulous, and you're fabulous too. The whole world is <laughs> fabulous. fabulous. I'll see you. Bye. is so bad, Damon. If you want customers to come in, you have to give some indication that we're open. Right? What are you doing here so early? Gwen dropped me off. Go home, George. didn't want to separate themselves from England. Kind of like a teenager's fantasy to live away from home while mom and dad pay the bills. <laughs> but then uh, King George got fed up with the colonists and started taxing every little thing they did. Your boyfriend's here, Miss oh, um, Start chapter four. If I get arrested, come bail me out. Hi. <laughs> Ooh, you look all official. What's up? Oh, no. Someone backed into my new car. Mark. Excuse us. Excuse us, please. Let her through. Was that late? Contaminated blood all over the place. You have to be behind the
Take one, focus, just focus. You can do this. Items to handle today. Choose casket. Build to visa. Meet with George's insurance agent. Pick out sh shirts for his burial. Thanks, you're the best. And this fabulous. <laughs> Did you get that? I said it was fabulous, and you're fabulous too. The whole world is fabulous. <laughs> So where'd you hear this crap? You, well, I don't have time for rumors. When you got confirmation, then call me. Yeah. Hi. Gwen? Oh, hi. Thanks for coming down. Come in, please. Hi. Ha have a seat. Thank you. So how you doing? Still numb, basically. Yeah. Well, sorry to drag you down here so soon. Have they finished the... Uh... Autopsy? Yes. More facts to debunk Damon Benning's self-defense story. I don't understand what he thinks he was defending himself from. George is... was the gentlest person I've ever known. Well, according to Damon, he and your brother got into an argument over selling the store, and George came at him with a knife, threatening to cut himself, bleed on Damon, and infect him with HIV. What? It's preposterous, I know. Especially since the only knife the cops found was in the sink, 25 feet away from George's body. And now we know that George didn't even have any knife wounds from which to bleed. I can't believe Damon said that. Damon was going to torch the place for the insurance money, and George walked in on him. Torch it? Damon was badly overextended. He really needed that extra cash. Uh, DeSoto, here, right now? Okay. Bye. What's wrong? Somehow, Damon Benning has retained Merle Hammond as his lawyer. That name sounds familiar. No, I'm sure it does. You remember the Osborne case a few years ago? city supervisor was charged with raping a high school girl? Yes. No, Merle Hammond was the defense lawyer. And won an acquittal. Guess I'll have to brush up on my dirty tricks. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, I've only been on the case for about five minutes. Obviously, I have no comment other than to say that I will be defending Damon Benning on murder charges. Are you doing this pro bono? Well, gee, Bob, I had no idea you considered me among the altruistic. I am tough. <laughs> Actually, the fees for Mr. Benning's defense are being provided by the Coalition for the Preservation of American Families. Is that where the money's oh, coming from? I'm sorry. Come on. Thanks a lot, guys. Where are the Ms. Sadakoy, how long was your brother George friends with the defendant? They met in high school, so I guess it would be almost 20 years. And uh, when did they go into business together? Five years ago. Was it a successful enterprise? For a while, yes. But then after the franchises moved in, business dropped way off and they started losing money. Ms. Sadakoy, can you describe for us the friendship between these two men? Well, two very intelligent men. Their friendship was open and honest. For as long as I can remember, they both enjoyed a good debate. Even their arguments were more like philosophical discussions. Sometimes I needed a thesaurus to keep up. Did your brother ever threaten anyone for anything or behave in a threatening manner? No, he was a very gentle soul. Thank you, Miss Sadakoy. Good morning, Miss Sadakoy. Uh, would you mind telling the jury what it is you do for a living? I'm a teacher, fifth grade. It's at St. Albion School, isn't yes. it? Yes. It's a Catholic school, isn't it? Yes. Are you yourself Catholic? For the most part. For the most part? Well, is there some part of the Catholic doctrine that you object to? Uh, their stance on homosexuality, perhaps? Objection. Relevance leading the witness. Withdrawn. 
Miss Sadikoy, would you uh, tell us when you learned that your brother was homosexual? Objection, once again, relevance. It goes to this open and honest friendship between the defendant and the deceased, which the witness has characterized, Your Honor. I'll allow it. Oh, repeat the question, Miss Sadikoy. When did you first learn that your brother was homosexual? He told me when he graduated college. And that was also when he informed Mr. Benning he was a homosexual, is that not? Objection calls for speculation. No, it doesn't, if you'll allow the witness to answer the question, Your Honor. He told us at the same time. So uh, between high school and college graduation was what, five, six years? Yes, about that long. So your brother had this open and honest friendship with the defendant, except for the part about him enjoying sex with men. Objection, Your Honor. Defense's job is not to make snide comments. Sustained, Mr. Hammond. I apologize, Your Honor. I'm merely trying to clarify Miss Sadikoy's definition of open and honest. So noted. Move on. Ms. Sadikoy, uh, did Mr. Benning ever discuss your brother's homosexuality with you? Not that I recall. You don't recall Mr. Benning ever telling you that he wished your brother had disclosed his homosexuality sooner? No. Or that Mr. Benning felt betrayed by your brother's secret homosexuality? No. Or that Mr. Benning told you, George feels like a stranger to me. I wonder what else I don't know about him. He never said any of that to me. Where are you getting that stuff? No further questions. Thank you, Ms. Sadikoy. Mother, where did you put the colander? It's not in the top cupboard. Yes, it is. I put it there myself. Hey. Hi. How'd the rest of the day go? Oh, pretty much like the part you saw. Hammond used the word homosexual 17 times, and that was after I started counting. Now, DeSoto wants me to ask George's gay friends not to attend the trial unless they bring a woman. Mother, where's the damn colander? Please don't cook. I'm not hungry. Well, I am. And you have to eat something or your stomach will growl when you're on the stand tomorrow. Mark, would you, would you please tell Mom she has to testify, especially if she's not going to attend the trial? Well, it can be helpful in cases like this. I don't want to go. I know what they're going to say about him, and I don't want to hear it. Mark, will you please take her home now? Why is she being so stubborn? Gwen, cut her some slack. She has a right to be wary. We're talking about George's murder. What is the jury going to think if his own mother doesn't even show up to... To, to, to what? Hear him be called a pervert? A danger to society? Oh, God. It's just the first day. Both bullets entered the victim through the back of the torso, tearing through the spleen and the aorta, exiting in the front. Is an exit wound in the front consistent with a person lunging toward a gun? Not unless the person was lunging backwards, which is anatomically impossible. Did you find any knife cuts on George Sadikoy's body, specifically his arm? No. Thank you, doctor. Doctor, you've testified that there were no knife cuts on the body. Any other marks? There were some striations on his upper shoulder, probably caused by continuous scratching, perhaps from a rash. Mm -hmm. Were these striations raw? They were healing. Could they have produced a bloody secretion tainted with the HIV virus that causes AIDS? Well, if you scratch them hard enough. Any other marks? A uh, small tattoo, his earlobe was pierced, and so was his left nipple. His left nipple of his breast? Yes. Could you determine the cause of such a mutilation? Objection. Relevance? Your Honor, such a wound could be the source of a potentially lethal blood secretion. Overruled, but make it fast. Once again, Doctor, do you know how George Sadikoy could have come to be pierced in his left breast nipple? It was most likely done voluntarily for the purpose of wearing a nipple ring. You mean for the sake of jewelry? Yes. I think I'll just stick with a watch. Your Honor. Withdrawn. Gwen, what are you doing? Some grease in the cracks. If you let it go too long, it's impossible to get out. Does it come out easier at 3 o'clock in the morning? I'm sorry. <laughs> Did I wake you? Hey. Oh, 
come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Oh. Mm. It's not about the murder. What's that? Damon Benning killed my brother, and no one seems to care. Oh. Hammond has turned this trial upside down. He's made it about George's homosexuality, his lifestyle, his stupid nipple ring. Mm -hmm. But he's never, ever going to let it be about George's murder. Eyes up here. <laughs> All right, as I told you at the beginning of the week, you'll have a substitute on Thursday, Friday, and possibly Monday. But I'm going to leave very specific instructions for the lessons so we don't get behind on our project, ladies. Unless you're discussing issues of historical significance, the whispering has to stop. Okay. Sarah said you shouldn't be allowed to teach at St. Albion's because you don't come from a good Catholic family. I did not say that. I said that her brother broke Catholic rules, and that might be why he was killed. Is that true, Miss Sadakoy? If you break Catholic rules, you can be killed? No, it is not true. Well, my mother said he was a homo. The word is homosexual. And being one doesn't break any Catholic rules. My mother said it did. Your mother has been misinformed. The Catholic Church teaches that sex outside of marriage is wrong, whether you're homosexual or not. But he must have had sex, because he had AIDS. He was HIV positive, and you can get it in a few ways, not just through sex. So how did your brother get it then? Sarah, he was murdered. Does it really matter now? The Benning murder trial got an early recess today when one of the jurors became physically ill over testimony heard in court. The defense began its portion of the trial today with defense attorney Merle Hammond questioning witness Terrence Layton, who claimed to have had a sexual relationship with murder victim George Sadakoy in the past. According to Layton, Sadakoy exhibited a violent temper when he didn't get his way sexually. His description of that relationship offended a juror so much that she fled the jury box. Terrence Layton has held a grudge against George for years because George wouldn't lend him money. You have to discredit him. And how am I supposed to do that without the jury hearing even more stuff about your brother they shouldn't hear? Mr. Layton, isn't it true that when you refused to have oral sex with Mr. Sadakoy in a bathtub full of vegetable oil, he did not become violent but instead refused to loan you money? I'm, Gwen, I'm sorry. It's just that Hammond's strategy is solid. It's working and it makes me sick. And the bottom line is that giving Terrence Layton a lot more airtime isn't going to fix anything. Well, then what will? Your mother has to take the stand. We have to show the jurors that if a sweet-looking woman like her can love and accept her homosexual son, then we all could. Whatever happened to trying the facts? Why can't we just get back to what happened in the shop that morning? It's too late for that. The state now calls Barbara Sadakoy. I was widowed when Gwen and he were quite young, and George would make me these funny little cards to cheer me up. Did he uh, get along with his sister Gwen? He was a very protective brother. There were times when I knew Gwen was at fault, but George always took the blame. How did you feel when your son George revealed to you that he was gay? Well, I was a little disappointed. But he seemed happy. So uh, I, I really didn't think much about it after that. Did you stop loving him? Oh, no, of course not. He was still my son. And what about when he revealed to you that he was HIV positive? Then I cried. I cried a lot, but uh, George made these funny little cards for me, like when my husband died. They were like miracle pills. So he helped you deal with this difficult situation? Oh, yes. 
I always knew there was a chance that George would die before I did, and I prepared myself for that. But I never prepared myself for him to die at the hands of his friend. Mrs. Sadikoy, you understand that it's my job to provide the best possible defense for my client. Yes. And that we're all here to get at the truth. Yes. Need to ask some tough questions. Is it all right if I ask those of you? Yes. Thanks. Um, do you know the defendant very well? He and George were friends for many years. I saw him fairly often. Mm -hmm. Did you like him? Yes, I did. He was polite. You ever read any of the children's books he wrote? The first one about the bunny that didn't like carrots. I thought it was very funny. <laughs> Maybe because I don't like carrots. Same here. Don't trust any food that's orange. Um, do you uh, read a lot, Mrs. Sadikoy? Magazines, so forth? Yes, yes, I, I'm an avid reader. Well, I'm going to read something for you now. Uh, it might be a little difficult for you to listen to, but I'd like you to tell me if you recognize any of it, okay? OK? OK. Perhaps the reason we've been slower to respond to the epidemic is because we're used to having it shoved down our throats. Well, we're not going to take it anymore. The straight world has tried to exterminate us. Now it is our turn to kill or be killed. It's time to take the world hostage, not with a gun, but with a vial of our own blood. Do you recognize this material, Miss Sam? Now, does it sound familiar to you? No. You've never heard or read any of this. I don't read things like that. Oh, I understand. Neither do I. Why don't you, Mrs. Sadikoy? Sick, repulsive. Scares you, doesn't it? Your Honor, where is this going? To Mr. Hammond. To please the court. This was written by your son, Mrs. Sadikoy. Your Honor, the prosecution demands... In a moment, Mr. DeSoto. Mrs. Sadikoy, you may step down. The court is recessed until two. Counsel in my chambers. Mom. Mom, it's all right. Now, do you understand why I didn't want to testify? Mom, Hammond didn't read the whole article. That was just the opening George wrote to get the reader's attention. Gwen. The very next paragraph stated that this, this militant approach is wrong. He even said it was more dangerous than the virus itself. Mom, the rest of the piece is a beautiful... None story. of that matters! None of that matters. Killed George all over again in there. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, there's a lot to get emotional about in this case because there's an element of it that may go against your own beliefs. I understand that. But what the defendant is asking us to do is to crucify George Sadikoy and to sentence him, his sister, and his mother to a death without justice. He's asking us to say that the murder of George Sadikoy is OK, because he was a homosexual. There is no evidence, none, that George Sadikoy was ever a threat to the defendant. Ladies and gentlemen, make your decisions based on the facts. An insurance policy that would have paid off better than the offer to buy already on the table. Gasoline spilled strategically in the corners of an office filled with flammable material. No knife and no knife wound on the victim. Just two bullet holes in his back exiting through his front as he undoubtedly walked away from his assailant. This is what happened. Damon Benning was going to set fire to the store to collect the insurance. But when his friend, George Sadikoy, caught him in his crime, Damon killed him. It's a simple, reasonable explanation for what happened on that morning. But most of all, it's the truth. Two men, friends since high school, same interests, same intelligence, same sense of humor. But there were differences. Damon Benning chose a family man's life, wife, children, church. He wrote children's books for a living. George Sadikoy went with an alternative lifestyle, one that eventually left him with a disease that would ravage his mind and body and finally kill him. 20 years after these two similar but different men became friends, one had everything to live for. 
and the other had nothing to lose. The prosecution would have you believe that my client killed in cold blood, that his story of self-defense is a bald-faced lie. I pose this question. If Mr. Benning were to lie, why would he tell that one? Couldn't he just say that he shot at someone he thought was an intruder? Nope. Mr. Benning told a story that was quite specific, quite horrifying, and quite true. That his longtime friend, who was gay, had threatened him with an HIV infection. Now, the prosecution claims that there'd be no reason for Mr. Benning to react as he said he did. That given George Sadakoy's size and fading strength, the defendant was in no danger. Really? Let me ask you this. If you were threatened with the scourge of this century, with a disease of pandemic proportion, a disease that is a death sentence, how clearly would you think? How reasonably would you react? How afraid would you become? And what would you do to save your life when attacked by a man who had already lost most of his? The defendant will rise. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? In the matter of the state versus Damon Benning, on the count of murder in the first degree, we, the jury, find the defendant not guilty. Come on in. You're just in time to help me pass out the homework assignment. You know, I think I like this job better than my own. Gwen, you know all of us have been moved by your courage during this very trying time in your life. Last night, the board of directors decided to reward you with a sabbatical so that you can have time to heal properly. Oh, well, I thought the summer vacation would do that. <laughs> In my experience, a trauma such as the one you've been through can take a long while to heal. So this healing period would overlap next year's school calendar? Well, much as that would be a disappointment to us all, we're willing to sacrifice your tremendous services for the sake of your well-being. Not to mention the well-being of the St. Albion coffers. What happened, Father Halligan? Did the contributors threaten to cancel those big checks if I'm still teaching their kids? What the contributors did or didn't do is entirely beside the point. No, I believe it entirely is the point. I told them what a fine teacher you are and how lucky the school is to have you. 
In the end, there was nothing else I could do. Yes, there was. I tried to call George today for a moment. I forgot. To the reason I smile, to the cause of my laughter, to the source of my love, to my mom, I love you, George. Here's the St. Christopher medal that he he was wearing when he when when they. I thought you'd like to have no, it. No, you keep it. But you gave it to him. Yeah. A lot of good it did him. No one will ever know that this is the real George. No one's ever heard these words, only the awful ones. He made George sound like a monster. Yes, he did. Why? Because... That's how he could win. Impressed his parents and their friends, even as an infant, speaking in full sentences by age two and making pithy arguments by age four, the toddler was clearly destined for a public forum. In his early years, he was an indifferent student. As is so often the case with gifted children, his parents were even concerned for a time about his development. His grade school teachers described his uncanny knack for persuasion as mesmerizing, capable of convincing a starving man to give away his last meal. His mother hoped he'd join the ministry, but that didn't suit Merle Hammond. <laughs> She idolized all these TV uh, evangelists. So I remember saying to her, <laughs> I can't become a preacher, Mama. They wear the same outfit every day, and it's way too confining for my fashion sensibilities. <laughs> so it's 12. <laughs> but, you know, legal system's gain is God's loss. Although I would defend him if someone sued him, and I'd win. Take my word for it. <laughs> By the mid-70s, Hammond was already establishing himself as one of the most aggressive... Hello? ...respected prosecutors... Gwen? Yeah? It's me. Are you all right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I just broke a glass is all, and I... I just have a mess to clean up. What is, what's up? I left my gym bag in your house the other night. Um, I was just wondering if you could drop by the station sometime today. After school would be fine. <laughs> After school... Well, I mean, if that's a problem, you don't have to. But... No, not at all. I'll bring it by. All right, thanks. I love giving oral book reports. I love getting up in front of the class, telling them exactly what I thought of this book and why they should read it. I never actually read the books. I didn't have to.
Give me your keys and get in the trunk. Miss Sadako. Try driving my car. You could have just asked. Get out. Get in the cage. Look, whatever it is you want, I'm willing to listen. Do you even know how to use that thing? My boyfriend is a cop. What do you think? your shoes. What? Take them off. Good, she already brought it. Yeah, we were debating whether we should bury it or not. What do you got in there, dead animals? Yeah. Yeah, no, we gotta go right now. Hey, we gotta go. Dear Mark, I may be hard to reach for a couple of days. Just got a few things I need to straighten out. Love, Gwen. Hey, Mark. Mark, we gotta go. Yeah. Santa Coy. Miss Santa Coy. Miss Santa Coy. Hello? Hello? Did you say something? Look, is this about money? Money? Uh, ransom, extortion. The usual motives for kidnapping. Well, I'd never considered that option before, but now that you mention it, do you know anyone who'd actually pay to get you back? <sighs> All right, then, revenge. No, it is not about revenge or money or punishment. Although, for what you put my mother through on the stand, I should rip your tongue out! If it's about anything, it's about finding out what makes you tick. Oh. Well, if that's all there is to it, I could tell you everything over a bottle of brandy. I seldom do my best work in a dog kennel. No, I'm sure you do your best work in a litter box. Now what? Hmm? Bamboo shoots under my fingernails, or uh, Chinese water torture? Oh. <laughs> Hadn't really planned that far ahead, had you? Go in there. Go in there. To the right. OK, yeah, yeah. down on the floor. Face down. OK. Hey, hold your hands up. Cuff yourself to the foot of the tub. Yeah. Do it. All right. Oh, music. Every kidnapping should be accompanied by it. What the hell is this? What? Murder in the streets. 
Yeah, it beats. Life in the hood is quite unique. Asphyxiate the skin, block 17 B. Instantaneously red, arch rivals lead fit. Change, but your back fade of the homies because they spread hit same. So it's one for the rodents and two for the killers to run through your house like the Pittsburgh Steelers. Not in the hood, it's quite unique. Miss Santa Coy, surely you've got something better to do than hole up in a cabin with me. I used to until I got fired from my job. It seems my blood ties to a murder victim don't make me fit to teach fifth graders. Of course, that could be because George is no longer seen as the victim. Well, it's not as if the term has much meaning anymore. Excuse me? Everybody's a victim nowadays. Damon Benning was a victim of threats from your brother, and he, in turn, became a victim of Benning's gun. And you're a victim because you lost, and now I'm a victim because I won. Well, thank you for setting me straight. I guess from now on, I'll simply refer to George as existence challenged. <laughs> Listen, my brother is dead. That's not your fault but leaving him to rot in a grave of lies while his killer gets rich sure as hell is. No, 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 no! <laughs> I'll do anything you want. Money, a job, anything. Just turn off that noise. So it's one for the rodents and two for the killers to run through your house like a pitch bird still is not fiction. Everything that I brought. Well, I'm disappointed. I thought you'd be hardier than this. No wonder they fired you. You're sick and demented, and you're not fit to be a teacher. You could be right. I don't know what I would tell my students anymore. Start with, kidnapping is a felony. Along with, the truth doesn't always matter, and uh, the ends justify the means. Kind of ironic, since I became a teacher to teach just the opposite. <laughs> sick, demented, and now delusional. Aren't you just dying to know what I'll do next? What a gambler in court. 
How are your instincts out in the wild? Please. Oh, that spin didn't feel lucky for you? Okay. I'll give it another shot. Oh, pardon the pun. Be darned, you were right. No bullet in that one. Actually, no bullets in any of them. <laughs> Didn't tell me you really thought I was gonna kill you. you got washed up. Come on. Get in the tub. There you go. Hey, at least I turned off the music. Uh, I've got to change your clothes for you. Um, call me when you're finished getting washed up. Well, I'm still waiting for that to come back to the play, evidence lab. Play it again for mm -hmm. golf-wise. Horrible Does anybody know if Gwen called? No, uh, no, but there's a message from her mom. I'll bet she's out celebrating. What are you talking about? It's Marla Hammond's car they're towing in here. What? Yeah, yeah. They found it abandoned over by Pleasant Hollow Country Club. Nobody's seen old Merle since he bogeyed the 18th hole the other day. Who'd they give the case to? Well, not you, that's for sure. What, do they think I wouldn't actually look for him? <laughs> well, would you? I'm a professional. Maybe. <laughs> Go ahead. See, I didn't even poison yours. Why have you done this? Maybe some of your strategy rubbed off on me. Your court strategy to keep everyone off balance. Watch out for the bones. Why'd you become a lawyer? Because it required less time than becoming a doctor. You almost became a doctor? Wow, scary thought. <laughs> Have you ever loved anything? The law. The law. So on a cold night, you cuddle up in front of the fire with a book on torts. Best mistress I've ever had. With all these seductive rules and procedures that tempt the inquiring mind to figure a way around. And when you do, mm, that feeling of conquest, victory, there's nothing else like it. That sounds more like lust than love. Well, love. That's an emotion I try to avoid. It confuses, causes ridiculous behavior, but much like yours, for example. The love you feel for your dead brother has prompted you to kidnap me, a crime that will send you to jail and will ruin your life. Well, now, Merle, aren't you jumping the gun a little? I could get me a lawyer just like you and end up a celebrity. Miss Satterquay. There are no other lawyers just like me. Hello, St. 
Albion. Hey, Cindy, it's Mark Sherman. Oh, hi, Mark. How's Gwen doing? Oh, I guess she's okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. I haven't heard from her yet. Then you don't know? No, what? Mark, Gwen quit. What? She doesn't work here anymore. Wait, 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 wait. When did this happen? Since when? Since Wednesday. If you want, I can put you through to Father Halligan. Uh, no, no, that, that, that's, that's okay. Uh, thanks, Cindy. Sure. And when you do talk to Gwen, tell her we all miss her. Yeah, I, I will, I will. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. I'm out of here early. Yeah. Okay, later. Hello. Mr. Osborne, Mr. Gordon Osborne. Yeah, that's me. Uh, my name is Gwen Sadakoy. You don't know me, but I was wondering if, uh... If I could talk to you about someone. Who might that be? Merle Hammond. Oh, dear Lord. Come on, Merle, let's go. Put your shoes on. We have an appointment. Come on, we're taking a little field trip. So where are we going that I actually have the honor of sitting in a seat rather than a cage? You'll find out soon enough. You used to be a prosecutor. Why'd you change sides? Same reason everyone does. Money. Is it strange defending people you used to prosecute? Look, if you're living by the misguided notion that the prosecutors are the angels while the defense attorneys are the devils, allow me to enlighten you. I learned some of my best tricks in the DA's office. Is that a term they teach in law school? Trick? I can feel that sanctimonious lecture on truth and ethics just hovering over those self-righteous lips of yours. I'm curious. Is the whole point to trick everybody? The judge, the witnesses, the jury? Oh, juries? Oh, the juries aren't bright enough to trick. <laughs> After all, these are people too dumb to figure a way out of jury duty. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining, mind you. As far as I'm concerned, the dumber they are, the better. Okay. Let's say I get a group of shoppers out of the grocery store. I take them to a hospital where two neurologists are trying to figure out whether to operate on a patient's frontal lobe or his cerebral cortex. After the doctors explain the pros and cons of each operation to these shoppers, they still have no idea what should be done. Would you consider them dumb? The jury's obligation is to render a decision based on the facts presented. Nonetheless, I find your defense of them admirable. It isn't often you hear someone speak so highly of sheep. Well, 
as one of their shepherds, don't you feel a little responsible when they end up roaming aimlessly in some field far off the mark? I don't give a damn where they wind up or how they got there, as long as I win. In law school, you learn law. In the courtroom, you learn survival. Your job is to get your client off. And believe me, if I were defending you on a murder charge, you wouldn't want it any other way. All I would want would be a fair trial. <laughs> Yeah, whatever anyone preaches about a fair trial, what they really mean is one that ends in their favor. That makes it fair. Mr. Osborne. Miss Hedekoy? Are you sure you're okay with this? Yes, ma'am. Don't you recognize this man? I'm, I'm Gordon Osborne, Mr. Hammond. Louise Osborne's father. I sat in a courtroom 10 feet away from you for three months while you spun lie after lie about my daughter and the man who raped her. Forgive me for not recognizing you right away, Mr. Osborne, but as you can see, I've been under a great deal of stress lately. Yeah. I guess I'd know a little bit about that myself. Louise, we got company. Tried to kill herself about a year ago. Swallowed a whole bottle of barbiturates. The doctors saved her body. They couldn't save her mind. I worked hard to keep this last chapter in Louise's life private. Is this what this whole charade has been about? Dragging me out here to look at some brain dead girl in hopes that I'll drop to my knees and beg for forgiveness? That's sick! I didn't know she was like this. I didn't tell you because I was afraid you might not come. Mr. Osborne, I'm so sorry that your daughter tried to commit suicide. But I'm not to blame for it. Really? Funny now, you see, I don't remember anyone else but you dragging Louise's reputation through the mud in that courtroom. After the assault, all she had left was her honest word. And then you went and raped that, too. It was my job to defend my client without any concern for the peripheral fallout. The bottom line, Mr. Osborne, is that sometimes life sucks. Please forgive me. I never should have bothered you. No. I'm glad you came. For three years, the only person I hated more than the man who raped Louise 
was the man who got him acquitted. Being a good Christian, I always felt sort of guilty about that. I don't think I'll feel guilty anymore. Exactly what did you hope to accomplish with that little adventure? You can't kidnap the judicial system. If you don't like the way it works, do something to change it, legally. Amateurs. Now what? Shut up. I'm sorry to trouble you again, Mr. Osborne, but I need a favor. Sometimes her clutch wants to stick, but otherwise she's pretty dependable. Oh, thank you. here when I didn't see your car parked out front. I, I didn't bring mine. I thought it would be too much of a target. Well, your instincts are good. There's an APB out on you. I heard it on the radio on the way over here. Have you spoken to my mom? Yeah. I told her that I was going to meet with you. All she cared about is that you were all right. She's been through so much already, and now I've made it worse. She's already lost her son, and now she has to watch her daughter go to jail. No, you don't know that. How can you say that? I did it. 
I kidnapped Merle Hammond. I am guilty. No, don't say that. Don't say that you're guilty. Can't you understand? What do you want me to lie? No, it's not lying. It's... There were extenuating circumstances. Mark, you're a cop. How can you say this to me? Do not plead guilty. You, you gotta promise me. Promise. You got a visitor, Santa Claus. It's not visiting hours yet, is it? It ain't that kind of visitor. Miss Sadakoy, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Danielle Klein, criminal defense attorney who would like to take your case pro bono. Why? You looking to make a book deal? I don't trust the public defender to win you an acquittal. Why should he? I did it. Did what? Take Merle Hammond on a joyride during which he was subjected to rather annoying conditions? <laughs> Most people put up with more than that just going to work. Miss Klein, I'm willing to take responsibility for what I did. Gwen, this is no time to be Joan of Arc. Because you're not alone in the commission of this felony. Really? I, I didn't notice anyone else there. What forced you to commit this crime is a damaged legal system greatly in need of repair. No offense, but you're a part of that system. And to exonerate me requires that you abuse it the same way Merle Hammond did. Believe it or not, I do think I can effectively defend my clients without leaving a trail of bloodied bodies in my wake. But can you win without doing it? The day I think I can't is the day I set up practice with Merle Hammond. But if that's not enough to change your mind, I would like you to consider another thing. Your mother. Doing it your way is extremely admirable. But if your mom had a choice, I'm sure she'd rather admire you at home than through the bars of a jail cell. And you will go to jail if you plead guilty. Absolutely not. No plea bargains, no probation. I want jail time. What makes you think if we go to trial, a guilty verdict is a slam dunk? They're claiming diminished capacity. And except for this one little glitch in her life, this woman is a saint. No one's a saint. If I were cross-examining her, the halo would fall off with the first question. And this diminished capacity crap won't hold. I've never seen anyone more in control of her faculties. I am not saying she shouldn't be punished, but we can cut a good deal. This thing doesn't even have to go to trial. I want it to go to trial. I want to send a message to all the other crackpots out there who think they can kidnap a lawyer and get away with it. Well, I suggest that you work on sounding a little more sympathetic before you take the stand. Don't waste any time worrying about me, Mr. Potts. The courtroom is my domain, regardless of the role that I'm playing. Then let me remind you that in this case, it is that of victim. Do not screw this up. You still up? I wanted to finish this sleeve. What are you making? Well, I hadn't decided, really. But it'll have a sleeve. I'm so sorry, Mom. I'm sorry for everything. Don't apologize, sweetheart. You only kidnapped the man. I'd have killed him. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't have done any of this. I kept telling myself this was about George. Or Hammond, or the law, but... I was wrong. Those were just excuses. What it was really about was letting go. Yes. I love you, Mom. I love you, too. I was about to put my golf clubs into the trunk when I 
suddenly found a gun in my face. The gun was being held by Gwen Sadakoy. She took my keys and forced me into the trunk, slammed it shut. Well, did you attempt to call out or fight back? Before I even realized what was happening, I was gasping for air in the trunk of my own car. Where did the defendant take you? We switched from my car to hers uh, in some wooded area. She then handcuffed me and forced me into a wire animal cage. I rode around cramped up like that for several hours. Till at last we wound up Move me from cabbage, the still at gunpoint. Woods. She pushed me down onto the bathroom floor, where I remained handcuffed to a bathtub for two days and nights. Nothing but never bread experienced and water. anything like that before. And I pray to God I never do again. No food, no sleep. It was torture. I thought she was going to leave me there to die. Then came the worst part. What was that, Mr. Hammond? She put the gun to my head. Mr. Hammond, please speak up. The court reporter can't hear you. I'm sorry, Your Honor. <clears throat> she put the gun to my head. And she spun the cylinder. She played Russian roulette with you? Yes. I begged her not to kill me. And she spun the cylinder again. When it clicked empty, I, I urinated. It was the most frightening and humiliating moment of my life. Mr. Hammond, do you recognize this? Life on the street is so unique. Yes, unfortunately, that's what I was forced to listen to for two days in the cabin. And you considered this a form of torture? Yes, I did. Do you know this artist, Mr. Hammond? Artist? No, I'm not familiar with that particular artist. It's Cool Nuts, and his album was number one on the charts for several weeks. Now, some people might find two days of this pure nirvana. And by that, I refer to the spiritual state, not the musical group of which you're also probably unaware. <laughs> I prefer classical music myself. Ah, then that explains it. Now, while Miss Satakoy was playing what you've described as Russian roulette with you, did she ever show you the firing chamber of the gun? She may have. Did she or didn't she, Mr. Hammond? Objection. Asked and answered. Sustained. Now, if she may have shown you the firing chamber, do you recall if she may not have had a bullet in it at that time? And I'd like to remind you that you are under oath. I don't recall a bullet at that time, however. Thank you. Now, would you please describe for our ladies and gentlemen of the jury what you were wearing when first confronted by Miss Satakoy and her empty gun? I was dressed for golf. I had just finished playing 18 holes. Is this the same outfit you golfed in? This sweatsuit you were wearing when you escaped? No. You changed somewhere along the way? At the cabin, yes. You brought an extra change of clothing with you? They were provided for me. By whom? By my captor, Miss Satakoy. She gave you a change of clothing? That's correct. Oh, why is that, Mr. Hammond? Well, I don't know. I suppose to make me look ridiculous as they're old and rather tattered looking. Or is it possible that when you wet your pants and suffered the most frightening and humiliating moment of your life, she gave you clean clothes and allowed you to get out of the dirty ones? Objection. Relevance. Overruled. Now, you said Miss Satakoy didn't give you anything but bread and water for two full days. That's correct. Two full days. You didn't have a solid meal. Until the evening of the second day, yes. Really? What'd she give you? Dried bread, crackers or something? I believe it was chicken. Chicken? Like Kentucky Fried? Something fast food? No. Well, what kind of chicken was it then? Free range, 
Well, how do I know? It was, how it was... did it get there? Who prepared it? She made it herself. <sighs> she made it herself. <laughs> now, let me get this straight. After you had a rather uncomfortable ride to a scenic mountain cabin, you were forced to listen to a popular best-selling CD, given a clean set of clothes, and served a home-cooked meal of chicken. My God, the nightmares you must have had. <laughs> Objection. Sustain, Miss Klein. It's a little early for a summation. I have no further questions for this witness, Your Honor. Hey, just a few more things to go over. No, Daniel, I know think we've uh, done this. I, I know what happened. Gwen, are you OK? So are you going to get a book deal when this is all over? Depends on what happens during the trial. But they might offer me one. Why? Would you be upset if I took it? Would you turn it down if I said yes? No. <laughs> well, at least you're honest. Gwen, I've got a successful practice. I don't need a book deal. And I didn't need this case either. So why are you doing it? And don't give me that bull about my not getting a fair trial with a public defender. To be in the heart of controversy. A couple of talk shows, magazine interviews, yeah. and best of all, to be squaring off with Merle Hammond, every courtroom lawyer's fantasy. <laughs> no matter how much they say they hate him. No, I, I get it. No, you don't. There's one other thing. You. In 20 years of criminal defense work, I've had two clients that I believed in. One was 10 years ago. I was about due. What happened to that one? Got the chair. <laughs> I'll go to my grave believing he was innocent. So, uh, my odds are good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Mr. Osborne, it's Gwen Boy, it's sure good to hear your voice. How you doing? Oh, hanging in there. I'm staying at my mom's. You need in your car? Uh, not really, but uh, you'd probably like yours. Well, I've been planning on going into town anyway. How do you feel about me driving yours in? That would be great. You stay strong, Missy. Me and Louise are praying for you. Bye. Preppy cars must not come with preppy stations. Miss Sadakoy, you admit that you took Mr. Hammond to your cabin against his will at gunpoint, don't you? Yes. How far in advance did you plan to do this? Not far. Sort of making it up as I went along. If you had no plans, did you have a goal, an intention? Nothing I could have articulated then. But all these feelings, these emotions I'd felt during the other trial, I, I guess I wanted Mr. Hammond to experience them as well. And what were those feelings you were trying to replicate for Mr. Hammond? Anguish, fear, insomnia, a lack of appetite, a constant throbbing in the head. Helplessness. Why did you want him to feel these things? Actually, I think I wanted to see if he could feel them. I wanted to see what was inside of him. And what did you conclude from this experiment? 
He reacted to physical stimuli, but not to emotional. Objection. The witness is not a psychiatrist or an expert in emotion. Nor does she claim to be, Your Honor. She is simply commenting on her observations. Overruled. Miss Satakoy, in which incident do you believe Mr. Hammond failed to react to emotional stimuli? When I took him to see Louise Osborne. This is the victim of a very brutal rape a few years ago, that's correct. Yes, Mr. Hammond defended and won an acquittal for the man accused of raping her. And why did you want Mr. Hammond to meet Miss Osborne? I read about the Osborne trial. I wanted him to have to look Louise in the face and explain why he had said the things he'd said about her. Like the things he said about my brother. You wanted him to confront the results of his methods. Objection. Leading the witness. I'll allow it. I wanted to see if he could hurt, if he could feel pain for his actions. And what did Louise say to Mr. Hammond when she saw him face to face? Objection, hearsay, relevance, and prejudicial. Your Honor, the truth is oftentimes prejudicial. Overruled. I'll repeat the question. What did Louise say to Mr. Hammond when she saw him face to face? She couldn't talk. She tried to kill herself last year, and it didn't work. Now she's basically catatonic. And what was Mr. Hammond's reaction when he saw this young and vegetative woman? He was angry for being made to look at this brain-dead girl, as he put it. He defended the job he did at the trial. And then he told Louise's father, he said, sometimes life sucks. Witness. Miss Sadakoy, do you feel remorse for your actions? I wish I hadn't done what I did. So you wouldn't have kidnapped Merle Hammond if you had that choice to do again? I don't know. You don't know? What kind of remorse is that? It's not about remorse. That was the original question. I can't say what decision I'd make again in the same situation, in the same state of mind. So you're telling me, under those circumstances, you would kidnap, torture, commit a felony again? I'm saying I don't know. To say yes or no would be lying. Would you also be lying if you said that you didn't believe deep down inside you are guilty? Objection! On what grounds? You're annoying me. <laughs> Overruled. Counselor, watch your step. Yes or no, Miss Sadakoy? Are you guilty? And do you think you should be punished for your actions? Court is in recess until further notice. Counsel, in my chambers, now. Nonetheless, I find your defense is admirable. It isn't often you hear someone speak so highly of sheep. Well, as one of their shepherds, don't you feel responsible when they end up roaming aimlessly in some field far off the mark? I don't give a damn where they wind up or how they got there. As long as I win. This tape is going to air on tonight's news. Would someone here care to explain to me what it is and where it came from? Don't look at me. You think if I had this, I'd sit on it? Obviously, the defendant taped this conversation without my knowledge. No, that is not true. I didn't know the tape existed, Your Honor. <laughs> right. You maneuvered me into this conversation in your car on the way to Osborne's. I have this gadget in my car to make notes to myself, but I swear on my brother's grave, I didn't know the tape was on. Somehow the button must have gotten pushed. Because you pushed it. The whole thing is a setup. Setup for what, Merle? 
Did you announce beforehand that you plan to trash the entire jury system? Well, that's a little disingenuous, don't you? That Your Honor, uh, listen. Your Honor, well, my Your client Honor, had jump no in any time, idea. Wait, there is no way we can has use that. No, no now, what I'd like to know is what you, you, you have to make a judgment on this, Your, Your Honor. Honor. Jump in any time, Wait, no. There's no way you're going to. This is not the You pushed it. 1943. By accident, when, when I slammed on the brakes and, and you spilled your coffee? Your Honor, if I had planned on taping him, I would have started it as soon as we got in the car, not when we were almost at the Osborne farm, which is how it happened. Anyone who's ever argued in my courtroom knows how much I hate surprises. And when something like this falls anonymously out of the sky, I really get angry. Before we proceed with this trial and consume any more of the dumb jury's time, I recommend counsel rethink their approach. I'm going to lunch. Miss Sadikoy, I suggest you do the same. Come on, Gwen, I'll buy you a hot dog while these two boys square off. Call me when you have the plea terms worked out. I forbid you to plea this case out. Fine. I'm sure when all the sheep in the jury box hear this tape, they'll immediately sympathize with your ordeal and convict Gwen. You're assuming the jurors pay attention to the news, much less this case? That woman is guilty! She kidnapped me and everyone knows it! You just don't get it, do you? If you let this thing play out any longer than it has to, you're gonna find yourself out of a job. That's ridiculous. You think so, huh? Who's gonna hire a lawyer who just pissed off the entire jury pool of the Western world? I'm telling you, stop now. Cut your losses. You gotta give us some penalty decision. Anything at all? Can you tell us about sheep? I hear you took a good pounding in there from the defense attorney. How'd that go? Oh, come on. Five years suspended sentence, three years probation, six months community service. Eighteen months probation, three months community service. Three years suspended sentence, two years probation, six months community service. Eighteen months probation, three months community service. Fine. So who do you think found that tape and sent it around? You, you mean you really don't know? No, I really do. <laughs> <laughs> well, whoever uh, sent in that tape managed to do something none of the rest of us have ever been able to do. What's that? Beat Merle Hammond. 